Hello everybody, Jared Voley here. In this video, I want to uh, respond to an excellent email that I got about uh, using humor as a mask. Uh, this email came from a girl named Brittany, and I'm not going to be uh, sharing you the, the entire details of the, the email, but I, I think it's important to talk about it. She, she brings up such, great, such a great question and uh, there's so much authenticity inside the email, um, like right, like I, you can feel even inside the email that someone's being real with you. Um, so like on stage, you don't think the audience can feel that you're being real with them or you're not being real with them. Um, it's super obvious um, when someone is being being super real with you. That I think that's an important lesson right there in in stand up. Anyway, so the the email, um, basically just to sum it up, I'll say that she, she talks about some of her life experiences, or in a generic way, she never said anything specific. But, um, and then she kind of summed it up by saying, for me, wearing the mask of humor compensated for my underlying pain. And so the first thing I wanna do is just honor that statement, like that's such an honest um, analysis and I think anybody that's listening to this video would would be thinking, um, yeah, me too. Um, I, you know, I humor is a great tool for diffusing like these awkward social situations. So real quick, I'll give you my own example for 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 my humor. My humor, um, you know, the, the 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 beginning of it would probably be when I first went into uh, into school. So I was homeschooled up until six and a half grade, and then I, I got thrown into the public school system, and I really didn't know what I was doing. Like I was very socially awkward, and um, you know everyone everyone else everyone else understood the basics of what going to school was like, and yet for me it was entirely new, and I felt like I. I was totally like an imposter. I didn't belong. I didn't know. I'm the only one who doesn't know what they're doing. So for me, that was that was um, the the ground zero of where I realized that using humor was an excellent way of um, of it was a, a mask that compensated for this underlying pain for me. So that underlying pain was that social awkwardness where I felt like. I was the only one who didn't know what they were doing. All right, so that was kind of um, for me. And I think anybody, anybody watching this video probably feels the same way. They, they have some other analogous uh, situation where they would say, yeah, me too. I, 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 I was using humor in this situation as a way of kind of masking that pain. Anyway, so with that out of the way, I want to I want to push back a little bit on this idea, and ask you if, if if it actually is if it actually is a mask that you're wearing. So here's here's my point. So when I use the word mask, when I think about masking it, I'm kind of using it as a verb, like it's it's um, covering the pain, but it's it's not. Uh, it's not something I, I wear. It's not something that isn't a part of me. So, like, if you're wearing a mask, then that means you can take it off and you will be, you know, you'll be somebody else, right? Like, you could set your humor down and then be the real you. Um, in my experience, and I would challenge you to ask if this is true for you, is that when I take off the mask, I'm still humorous. I'm just more, I'm just allow myself to use my natural sense of humor. All right, so it's not something that I, I don't, I don't use it to, to um, cover up the pain. I would actually more use it to reveal my pain. Like in comedy, your, your strengths and your weaknesses kind of uh, like they, they flip. So I'll give you an example. Um, if you are like, let's say, uh, socially awkward, so I'm totally a socially awkward person. Um, there, so you have social awkwardness, and then you have somebody that's very good, a good conversationalist. 
the person who's a good conversationalist is going to have a hard time drawing humor from being adequate right so it there's there's not a whole lot of conflict to play with like if everything goes normal it's very difficult to have a funny perspective on that but for me like if i'm socially awkward every conversation i have could potentially devolve into something that would be hysterical right like i love talking about all the accidental things I said, like I said the, the exact wrong thing at, you know, the, at the, that one specific time, and then it just like totally flat out everything else was done, right? Or a failed pickup line. A failed pickup line is hilarious. A pickup line that works is, oh, I don't know, interesting. I, was, I didn't know that they would really work. But anyway, so like if someone's good at picking up girls, that's going to be a hard, <clears throat> that's going to be a hard, uh, thing to turn comedy into, but if you're if if that's a weakness of yours, then that's going to be uh, almost naturally you're going to go in that way. So when you're saying that you have this, um, you know, your your mask has been used to cover cover up, the, you know, whatever um, unworthiness or or um, you know weakness or whatever that you have, I would encourage you to to flip that and to instead see comedy as your way of taking the mask off, right? Because comedy is the tool that you have been using to kind of divert attention away from inadequacies, okay? And at least for me, if I'm off base with this, then just assume I'm talking about myself because usually, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help other people, but I'm always talking to myself while I'm, I'm uh, responding to questions. I'm, I, that's one of the things I love about doing this is because I have to, I have to go deeper into myself in order to give uh, you guys a good answer to your questions as well. Anyway, so I would encourage you to to see humor as your way of of taking off the mask and being even more of what you what you already are, right? And and later on in the email. You asked, um, you said, now I just need to become exactly who I am and share that with the world. I love that sentence. That's amazing. And then you said, how do I minimize the learning curve and step into my own authentic voice? So first off, you, you, you already are you're like, okay, so the fear is that you take off the mask and people go, ah, you're, you're not perfect. <laughs> like, okay, like I already knew that. Uh, that's the fear, that's what stops people. That's what, why so many comedians go on stage and they have, ha they have their own mask on. Even though comedy will allow you to be totally real and authentic and really form a great connection with the audience, the, the fear of not being enough of, of failing on the stage, right? Or maybe you're, maybe you, you like, I don't want to fail on stage, or maybe you're super competitive and you say, I want to be the best on stage. Either way, whether you're on either of those two polar opposites, you're going to, you, the answer to that question is to become, to put a mask on and say, this is, look at this right here. And that really takes away from, um, your ability to, I guess, grow as a comedian. So think about it like this, like you can always get better at doing um, what, however you do your comedy. So let's say you have the mask, you, you're afraid of failing, so you put the mask on and then you go on stage and you tell jokes. And whether you, do, whether you, you have a bad show or a good show, Everybody agrees that you can go back, you can rewrite this, and you can get a little bit better, right? Like everyone agrees that there's always the opportunity to practice and get better, right? So people kind of, they, they, they get better and they say, okay, the, the mask, they're laughing now, therefore the mask is uh, correct. So I need to keep the mask on. So a lot of the comedians that are on stage, uh, on the open mic levels, they all have this mask on 
in, in varying forms, or not, I said not all, but many have the mask on. Um, a lot of people say that stand-up comedy, you, you don't have a fourth wall. Um, I disagree. I think that um, any honest, uh, if you look at the, the um, stand-up stand comedians when they jump on stage, the ones that are there telling these highly formal, um, overly structured jokes, they, there is a fourth wall there, right? Just because I can look an audience member in the eye and say, hello, does not mean that there's not a wall between us. I can be in the back of my head the entire show. I can completely ignore everybody in the audience, um, you know, on, on a real level. Right, just because you say hello, how are you, sir? Oh, nice, nice, you're here. That does not mean you broke the fourth wall. Anyway, so that is the mask that so many comedians have, even when they are uh, in the audience. They're talking to the audience. They still have that mask. So everyone agrees you can get better with with the mask on, but for a weird reason, we don't actually look at the opposite. Because the opposite is also true. You can put the mask on and you can improve. Or you can take the mask off. You can be the most real version of yourself. And again, whether that most real version of you, whether you have a good, uh, a bad show or a good show, you can improve that performance without putting on a mask. Right? So I can take the mask off. Who cares how the show goes because I can go back and I can rewrite, right? I can put more of myself in here. I, I could say, okay, the, the show didn't go well. And that's because this is the only thing that is true. The mask is the only thing that's true. That's not the, the way you should be going, right? That's not the, the lesson you should have learned. The lesson you should have learned is I need even more of who I really am inside my show. So like when you are talking about um, the mask, like, okay, so you, you take off the mask and let's say that instead of using the mask as, as a way of, of being humorous, you take it off and you say this like com from a place of complete self-acceptance, right? You would still be funny. And what I believe is that you would be even funnier than you would be with the mask. Because whatever it is under that mask, right, you've been limiting yourself with that mask. You've been trying to give the audience what they want, what they want to hear, right? Instead of, like, let's say you're a quirky person or you're, you know, just always acting crazy or weird or whatever. You're going to give yourself the, the right to be even more of that, all right? And there's no way that that doesn't become something hysterical, right? There's no way that that doesn't help you become more unique as a comedian, right? So just taking off the mask is a huge step forward um, as for, from both being more effective as a comedian as, and as far as uh, being unique, right? Because you're going be, to be able to connect with the audience more you're going to stop limiting yourself writing comedy. Oh my God. So this is the probably <laughs> the best. So I guess the best part is going to be the very last writing comedy. When you take off the mask, when you say like, okay, here's all the joke writing rules. Step four, you have to add your personality. When you just say, okay, that's, that's all bullshit. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to be the real me. When you start writing that way, writing is so much fun. All right. If you don't love writing, you're not doing it correctly. All right. Writing should be so enjoyable that you are addicted to it. And I believe if you take off the mask that that is actually going to happen for you. Not maybe not maybe not um, instantly. Right. Whenever you throw away the rules, that doesn't mean you instantly know exactly what you should be doing. Right? It just opens up a space where you can actually find out what is real. And when you do that, I'm betting 
So let's say like you, you throw away the, the, the conventional comedy rules and you take off the mask. Maybe your first show is not fantastic. I, I don't know how much experience you have as a, as a comedian. What I do know is that you can definitely improve on that and that your writing is going to be way funnier. All right, your performance is going to be coming from a place that's real. The audience is going to look at you and be like, oh, this is, they're telling me a joke, right? <laughs> okay, I, I try not to jam too much into these videos. And I, actually, I'm going to cut myself up. I'm not going to go with that last, that last idea. So I'm just going to wrap it up there. Take the mask off. Accept you, the, you as you. Right? Don't be your, how you see a comedian should be. Right? Don't try to act like a comedian. Find out, just throw away the rules, have this open space where you can find out who you really are without the mask, and then work on that. Uh, so that is the, the first part of Brittany's uh, email. I want to thank, thank her for such a great email. And uh, I'm going to be doing more of these types of videos in the future. So this is Jared Voley for creativestandup.com, and thank you for watching.